With hypersonic transport, we'd be able to travel to any part of the world in three hours or less. Let's talk about the challenges and ideas behind making this a reality. Going hypersonic means traveling at a speed more than five times the speed of sound, which would be Mach 5 or 3,835 miles per hour. I recently made a video about the development of supersonic commercial airliners, but even as those are yet to be released, several governments and private companies are currently engaged in a race to hypersonic flight. The official record for fastest manned jet aircraft has been held by the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird since 1976, a reconnaissance plane capable of flying above Mach 3. Experimental hypersonic planes have been flown in the past, but all have been powered by rocket engines or rocket boosters, which are extra heavy because they require carrying the oxygen used to fuel them as well as being extremely inefficient and not particularly reusable. What we're talking about in this video is the development of a manned hypersonic jet aircraft that can take off, fly, and land on its own like a regular airliner or fighter jet can. Sounds simple enough, but as we learned when discussing supersonic jets in a previous video, weird stuff happens at high speeds that makes certain thresholds a complicated hurdle to cross. There are three main problem areas that must be overcome to successfully build a hypersonic jet. What materials to use, how to design the craft, and the proper engine to use. Standard commercial aircrafts are made of aluminum because it's a strong, lightweight, and inexpensive material. Unfortunately, an aluminum plane would melt at hypersonic speeds, as would common stronger materials like steel. Heat on the body of the plane can reach temperatures of up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 12,000 degrees Fahrenheit in the engine. This is partly explained by the skin friction created by the airplane pushing air out of the way at five times the speed of sound, which is called aerodynamic heating. Heat is also produced by shock waves created when traveling above the speed of sound which is a rapid compression of air caused by air literally not being able to get out of the plane's way fast enough. As you can imagine, this also produces massive drag, which not only affects the speed of the aircraft, but can also damage materials and reduce its lifespan. But Juliani might be saying, that's my name by the way, we've sent a plane into space before. You may have heard of the space shuttle that took people to the ISS and back. What was that made out of? And why can't we just build hypersonic planes out of the same material? That's a great question and a convenient segue, thanks for asking. Mainly, space shuttles and hypersonic earthbound planes have significantly different uses. Space shuttles are designed to make a small number of trips whereas hypersonic jets would be making several flights per day and traveling within the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds for relatively long periods of time. Spacecraft solve the issue of extreme aerodynamic heating caused by re-entering the Earth's atmosphere at high speeds using tiles made of different materials based on the amount of heat the part of the plane they were on would be facing, which you've probably heard reference to as a heat shield. While this worked well for the few minutes it takes a space shuttle to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, it doesn't work quite as well for a hypersonic airliner traveling for hours at a time, because the space shuttle tiles, while extremely poor conductors of heat, are also very fragile. The main focus of the research into these materials is focused on some sort of ceramic tiles reinforced by carbon carbon material at the points getting the brunt of the heat, the nose and the leading edges. But these materials can be rather susceptible to damage from debris, which as shown by the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster can be extremely dangerous. The Space Shuttle Columbia itself used ceramic tiles and reinforced its leading edges with carbon carbon material. It was damaged to this heat shield from debris that led to its destruction upon re-entry. Clearly, engineers will have to come up with a material that is much, much safer if we ever want to see hypersonic flight become a reality. It seems for now, however, the answer is creating more durable ceramics. British and Chinese scientists working together made a breakthrough last year with a new process for creating carbides, which are ceramics formed by combining carbon with other materials. They start with reinforced carbon-carbon, which is a matrix of carbon reinforced by carbon fibers. Then, using a process called reactive melt infiltration, they infuse the carbon-carbon with zirconium, titanium, more carbon, and boron. The carbon-carbon structure absorbs these materials and the resulting material is a carbide that retains the flexibility and strength of the original carbon structure, but with much higher resistance to heat. In fact, it's about 12 times stronger than zirconium carbide, which is currently used to dissipate heat in things such as drill bits and reusable rockets. There is a lot more progress needed in materials before it's safe to use on a hypersonic plane. Following the materials and heat issue, although not unrelated, is that of what engine do you use on a hypersonic plane to maximize fuel efficiency and actually achieve the necessary speed. There are four kinds of engines one might consider, turbojet, ramjet, scramjet, and rocket engines, which we already discarded as an option at the beginning of this video. In my video on the comeback of supersonic planes, I discuss why a turbojet engine is best to achieve supersonic speeds. However, a turbojet engine doesn't cut it if you want to fly at hypersonic speeds, because it caps out around Mach 3.5. 
3.5, short of the Mach 5 requirement to go hypersonic. In part 2 of this video, I'll go into the challenges of the proper engine to use and how to design a hypersonic airplane. If you'd like to see sneak peeks of part 2 and other videos I'm working on and see my plans for this channel, please check out my Patreon and like this video because you made it to the end. Until next time, I'll see you in the future.